A long time ago in a land far away, there lived a warrior named Yang, who trained with the Sad Flute Clan since he was a kid to become the greatest swordsman in history. He achieved this feat by defeating the leader of the enemy clan and all his warriors, however when he found the leader's baby girl, he couldn't bring himself to kill her too. Unfortunately this action made him an enemy of his own clan, because no clan could truly win unless every single member of the enemy clan was dead, and that included the baby. With the sad flute going after him and not being able to trust even his own maid, Yang decides to burn down his house and take a ship to the USA, where he would find his old friend and former warrior Smiley to ask for sanctuary for him and the baby. Sadly when Yang makes it to the small town of Lode, there is bad news waiting for him, Smiley died three years ago. Meanwhile in Yang's old home, his master Sadis flute finds the ruins of Yang's house and a note from the shipping company Yang hired. Deciding to follow him to America, Sadist Flute gathers a big group of his clan's warriors to come with him. Back to Yang, the townspeople are wary of him, especially the local drunk Ron, but circus troop member 8 Ball is nice and takes him to Smiley's old laundry shop so Yang can stay there with the baby if he wants. Later in the evening, a woman named Lin attacks Yang from behind with a stick and he lets her hit him in order not to reveal his real identity. Lin apologizes before explaining that she used to be friends with Smiley and she thought Yang could have been a warrior enemy of Smiley. Seeing as Yang is a friend of Smiley too and needs help to start over, Lin decides to teach him how to do the laundry in order for him to take over the shop. She has an idea of how everything used to work because she used to help Smiley in exchange for him teaching him how to use a sword. Also, since Yang never got the baby's name, Lin decides to call her April. Yang cleans the shop to get rid of years old dust and the next morning, he's open and ready for business. A trio of teenagers tries to bully him when they bring some clothes over, but luckily 8-Ball shows up and scares them away before inviting Yang and April for lunch at the circus. The troop is in the middle of building a ferris wheel, hoping that will bring more tourists to their little town. Yang notices Lin is practicing knife throwing and she's awful at it, which puts her in a bad mood. Ron continues to complain about Yang's presence in town, but the rest of the troop is fun to hang out with. In the evening, Yang walks near Lin's home and hears some music for the first time in his life. Lin hears him outside and invites him in so they can listen to the opera music together. This is the first thing Yang learns to do as a normal person, and the list just grows from there. The more days pass, the more Yang enjoys his new life in town and the simplest pleasures of life, like the joy of making things clean, making friends and hanging out with them, working as a group with the townsfolk, playing games and feeling what it's like to lose at something, finding peace in private after a long day of work, watching the sunset, and starting his own garden. This last one is Yang's favorite because it allows him to bring life to this world instead of ending it. One afternoon, Yang notices Lin visiting the cemetery and asks 8-Ball about her past. Many years ago, the town came under siege by a corrupt colonel, who wanted a girl to have some fun with and chose teenage Lin. He took her through the nearest door for some privacy and they ended up in a kitchen, which gave Lin the chance to defend herself by throwing a pan of boiling grease at his face. Lin ran out of the building and the colonel shot her, so her parents together with her sibling tried to come to pick up her body, but the colonel shot them too. Later, after the colonel was gone, when the townspeople were moving the bodies to bury them, they discovered that while the rest of the family was dead, somehow Lin had survived. Later in the evening, Yang sees Lin complaining about her own aim while throwing little rocks around for fun. Understanding where her inner anger comes from now, Yang decides to help her and takes her to the circus to teach her to aim. He explains her problem isn't her arms but her focus, and Yang blindfolds Lin before making her throw knives at him, successfully landing them all without hurting him. Lin thanks him by calling him Sad Flute, revealing she's always known who he was because of Smiley's stories. She also takes the chance to ask why the clan is called that, and Yang explains they're the Sad Flutes because when you cut the throat, the last sound is a Sad Flute. Next, Lin asks him why he joined the clan in the first place. Yang tells her about his father, who worked in the field and died when a swordsman killed him just to test his sword. Yang had been angry at his father back then, and that's why he decided he wanted to become stronger than that. Noticing Yang is sad now, Lin gives him a necklace that used to belong to her mother. This reminds Yang of the only time in his life that he received a present, he was just a kid in training, and Satis Flute gave him a cute little dog. Afterward, Yang shows Lin his single-edged sword, which has been sealed to its scabbard so he can't kill again and nobody will hear the weeping of the souls he's taken. However he also has a couple of twin short swords, and he uses those to pick up Lin's training where Smiley left it, which Ron finds curious. Meanwhile, Satis Flute and the clan have taken over a ship by force, killing the entire crew. The USA is a big country but Satis Flute isn't worried, he knows he'll find Yang easily when he gives up and grabs the sword again, they just need to listen. Back in town, Yang's new life continues as normal, dealing with the teenager's pranks, cleaning the local's clothes, taking care of the flourishing garden, training Lin, and teaching April to take her first steps. When Christmas comes, the circus troupe throws a big party. Yang attends but refuses to dance, and when Lin asks him to take her for a spin, they go back to training. Lin finally manages to come close enough to put her sword on Yang's neck and she takes the chance to kiss him, but Yang is too confused to reciprocate. 
At that moment, the colonel and his men arrive in town, letting their horses stomp all over Yang's garden. The colonel is wearing a mask now to cover the burns Lin left him, and he interrupts the Christmas party by bullying the circus troupe. His men use the clown as target practice, and when Ron tries to stop them, the colonel catches him with his whip around the neck and makes one of his men drag him through the sand while riding a horse. Then, the colonel shoots the clown in the foot before deciding he wants a girl for the night. The townsfolk know Lin will want to take revenge and do something stupid, so they tie her up in a cellar and Yang takes her swords. However, she has a knife hidden in her boot, and after the men leave, Lin frees herself. While Yang wonders if he should take out his sword, the colonel gathers the local women and chooses one that turns out to be married. When the husband tries to defend her, the colonel shoots them both, causing their daughters to come out from hiding to cry for them and the colonel ends up choosing them instead. He has dinner while the girls wash, but his meal is interrupted by Lin, who has dressed up as a dancer and pretends to volunteer to be the colonel's entertainment for the night. The townsfolk discover Lin has escaped, and when Yang hears about this, he decides it's time to break the seal of his sword. Saddest Flute hears the seal being broken and the wailing of Yang's sword, so now he knows in which direction to guide his clansmen. Back to Lin, she tries to attack the colonel with her knife by surprise, but it turns out he's known who she is since the beginning and is waiting for her with his gun. With a shot at the ceiling, the colonel summons his men and makes them drag Lin to the bed so he can finally get what he wants from her, but they're interrupted by the sudden arrival of Yang through the window. He easily kills the other men and is about to kill the colonel too, but Lin stops him because she claims the colonel is hers. Deciding to use Lin as a shield, the colonel grabs her and pushes her with him through the window before running away as he rejoins the rest of his men. Lin follows him and uses her newfound focus to throw her knife, effectively killing the colonel, or maybe not. When the townsfolk come closer and take off the mask, it's revealed the body belongs to a random guy that was used as decoy, and the real colonel got to escape with his men. Yang goes to pick up his things in April, intending to leave town before he's found by Satis Flute because he doesn't want them to be in danger. However 8 Ball points out they're already in danger because the colonel will come back for revenge with even more men. Yang accepts to stay to help yet the townsfolks think he won't be enough, but it doesn't worry 8 Ball, because he points out they also have Ron. It turns out Ron used to be an outlaw and when he retired, 8 Ball buried all his weapons in the cemetery, so now it's time to dig them out. While Ron tests his aim and confirms is as good as it used to be, Lin talks to Yang. She's already guessed that he'll leave when it's all over and she wants him to consider taking her with him in April when the time comes. With the weapons, Ron finds his old cowboy clothes and takes them to Yang for cleaning. While the rest of the town uses the explosives to prepare traps, Ron and Yang bond over their pasts. Ron always knew Yang was a dangerous man because he could smell the blood, and Yang confesses he's always known about Ron too because of the same reason. The two of them shake hands and Ron explains he quit his very successful career as a thieving outlaw because the rangers that were trying to catch him killed his wife. Before dying, Ron's wife asked him not to pick up a gun again, and he's stuck to that promise since then. Today however it's an emergency, and 8 Ball had told Ron his wife would have understood. Ron advises Yang that if he truly loves someone, he should stay away from them not to bring them pain. Afterward, Yang gives Lin her swords back and reminds her of the best places to stab a man for a quick death, making her shiver with his gentle touch. The next day, one of the teens hides with April in a cellar while Yang waits at the town's entrance, and Ron positions himself on the ferris wheel. When the colonel and his troops arrive, they ride ahead and stomp all over the garden again, falling for the dynamite the townsfolk had hidden there earlier. The explosion kills a bunch of them and creates a dust cloud that allows Yang to move unnoticed as he kills more of the men. The colonel orders his men to move ahead and reach the circus, where the carnival machines are suddenly activated and create more explosions. Ron begins shooting at them from atop the ferris wheel, and when the colonel's men begin climbing the wheel to reach him, the circus troop shows up to shoot them off. While Yang continues to move in the shadows to kill more men with his sword, Ron uses as many bullets as possible before sliding away on a cable. Once he reaches safety, they make the ferris wheel explode, taking everyone down. The circus troop comes out from their hiding spots, thinking they've won, but the colonel and some of his men are actually still alive. Many of the performers are killed, and when the colonel's men are about to surround them, the chase is interrupted by the sudden apparition of Satis Flute and his warriors. A new fight starts between gun and sword users, and Yang tells Lin to run with April while he joins the battle. Both sides keep losing men at an alarming speed, especially because Yang kills opponents on both sides. He runs after Lin and April to protect them since the colonel's attention is on them, but when they find themselves surrounded, Lin gives April to 8 Ball for him to take her away while she helps Yang. Once they've defeated the warriors around them, Yang and Lin go to find 8 Ball only to discover the colonel killed him and took April away. The colonel hides with April in a hotel room, leaving a bunch of his men outside the door for protection. After more sad flutes get killed while trying to reach the baby, Yang shows up at the hotel too and quickly kills all the bodyguards before entering the room. With a quick movement of his sword, Yang disarms the colonel and gets April back yet he doesn't kill him, leaving that opportunity to Lin, who shows up as well. 
Lin and the colonel engage in a sword fight that begins with the colonel having the upper hand, but soon Lin turns it around and kills the colonel with great satisfaction. Afterward, it's time for Yang to confront his old master, who insists on the need to kill April because she'll always be the enemy. Saddest Flute doesn't think Yang has the guts to kill him in battle because he's always been soft of heart. When he was a kid, he had a lot of trouble killing the dog when his master ordered him to, and even as an adult, he couldn't even kill a baby. However, Yang will do anything to protect his loved ones and doesn't hesitate to kill his master, so Saddest Flute dies expressing his pride. Now it's all over, it's time for Yang to leave. Remembering Ron's advice, Yang not only decides not to bring Lin with him, but he also leaves April with the circus troupe so she can have a life away from danger. Months later, Yang is living on a frozen land while selling the fish he catches. Unfortunately, he's found by an assassin here too, thus after killing the man, Yang retrieves his sword and the necklace Lin had gifted him before burning down his latest house, including another opera record he had acquired. On his way out, he's found by more saddest flutes, meaning there will always be some fighting for him to do before finding a new home. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.